the island of Phuket, a jewel in the crown of Thailand's coastal resorts. Its blue waters and palm-fringed beaches have made it a magnet for tourism, fueling an economic surge that began in the late 20th century. But the deadly tsunami of 2004 swept away all of its economic aspirations and grand developments. This tragedy, though, inspired the island's authorities to prioritize their rebuilding giving the island city the opportunity to reinvent itself into a new, sustainable and environmentally friendly paradise. Asia is booming. Its population nearly quadrupled within a century. These boom towns are fueled by more than human or natural resources. Radical innovations are making them livable and sustainable. But the challenge of achieving these innovations can be tough. And the answers are never straightforward. This is Asianopolis, a city built from renewable energy and sustainable materials. In a land-scarce future, buildings would have to be constructed on almost any surface. This is the Mountain Rock House, a structure that's anchored right onto the rock face of a steep cliff. The Mountain Rock House takes advantage of an extreme landscape by incorporating it into its architecture. Innovative construction methods like this are commonplace in 25th century Asianopolis, developments that took their cue from the 21st century. Phuket, an island oasis on the west coast of Thailand. An exotic mecca for holiday revelers who travel from all over the world to indulge in its beauty. From the crowded sands of Patong Beach to the serenity of Karon's waterfronts, Phuket offers something for everyone. But a decade ago, tragedy struck. Phuket was swept by scenes of utter chaos and destruction during the 2004 tsunami. Over 800 people were killed, 1,000 injured, with the cost of damages amounting to over 170 million US dollars. Despite this turmoil, Phuket has found a way to boom once again. The island has rapidly rebuilt itself with many organizations recognizing both the opportunity and the need to develop in a sustainable manner. SEEK, an NGO in Phuket, is actively encouraging more developers to practice responsible construction. Phuket now, they understand how important about sustainability. And of course, they want to secure good environment, not for only their own guests, but for local people too. This desire for sustainable development has seen many organizations join the crusade. In 2010, Adrian McCarroll of architecture firm Original Vision was involved in one such project. This is Villa Amanzi, a three-story, six-bedroom villa located in the exclusive estate of Kamala. Sustainable features such as rainwater harvesting and bamboo flooring set this architecture apart. But what makes this villa truly extraordinary is its location. It sits on a rock face and offers breathtaking views of the Andaman Sea. Part of the enduring success of the villa is that people love going there. It's also very comfortable, but at the same time, awesome. But building a structure on a steep cliff can be a hazardous affair. Changes to the landscape can lead to deadly consequences. Construction in the hilltop or in the steep slope is caught big trouble there because the erosion starts from the hilltop. In December last year, got one resort in Patong. It's located on very steep slope and just collapsed on the local people's house. Adrian needed to find a way to minimize change to the landscape while constructing the villa. 
The site was dominated by a large boulder of rock, which, if removed, could have compromised the structural integrity of the land. But instead of seeing the rock as a problem, Adrian made it part of the big picture. And the idea was, wouldn't it be great to build something that perches on that rock and actually uses the rock as a reference point all the way down to the water? What Adrian was looking for was a way to build the villa on and against the rock face, using it as both a base and a wall. But this meant construction became a very complicated affair. So the biggest problem was to actually start the construction, finding somewhere that was level, where the workers could actually work from until they built a platform big enough to be able to get a compressor on there and get some power tools down there to start actually the excavation proper. It took the team five months to secure the platforms and the foundation. Now came the construction proper, but the decision to leave the rock uncompromised meant that even the simplest tasks become mission impossible. Even though we started managing to build platforms up from it, it's getting the materials from the nearest reasonably good road to the platforms that was a problem. This difficulty in overcoming the terrain meant that getting in prefabricated parts was not going to be possible. So the team had no choice but to construct everything on site, including the firendial frames, an important element of the bedroom wing. Unlike traditional brace structures, which use a diagonal beam to provide support, firendial frames make use of specially crafted rigid joints. These joints allow the frames to provide unobstructed views of the sea. But creating these frames requires utmost precision. If Adrian's team makes even the slightest miscalculation in the process, the results could be catastrophic. The risk with a Virendil frame is if the frame has not been designed properly and one of those joints fails, the whole thing can come tumbling down. A special team of South African engineers were brought in to aid the construction. With their knowledge and eight months of labor, the villa was successfully completed in late 2010. Three levels, six bedrooms, a living room, dining room, and a swimming pool, each commanding a jaw-dropping view. Villa Amanzi, as it stands today, is a perfect example of what can be achieved when design is used to work with and not against the surrounding environment with the rock cliff playing the starring role in the architecture. As you can see, it cascades down all the way down these stairs until it comes down and actually becomes a wall of the house itself. So from the living space down into the family room, we once again touch this slab of rock. The rock once again becomes a very familiar partner. Now we're coming out the, the bottom of the house, as it were. And this rock is the same rock that greeted us and we touched when we entered the house. This exercise in working with nature instead of against it has helped Villa Amanzi turn a problem into a solution. And in another part of Phuket, another resort has found a different way of using nature to make up for the lack of one of life's most essential elements. In Asianopolis, the city of the future, every conceivable means of water production has been investigated. And one of the most innovative makes use of a common natural resource. This is the rain harvester. Located on the top of buildings, these structures funnel rainwater in and filter it into clean drinking water, allowing each building to be self-sustaining in their water management. Rain harvesters like this are found all over Asianopolis. Initiatives that could be traced back to events in 21st century Phuket. Being an island, Phuket doesn't have the same amenities that mainland Thailand has. Of the difficulties it faces, water management is very much in the forefront of its challenges. The problem here is we don't have enough rain catchment area. It's not enough to serve you know, this high tourism and high development. One of the ways that the island has quenched the thirst of its guests is to bring in tons of plastic bottles of mineral water. But this solution is a problem in itself. The empty bottles pile up 
and contribute to overall waste. These problems are being faced by all of Phuket's resorts, but for some, the challenges are far greater. They are located far off the beaten track, which makes collecting water even more challenging. But this remoteness is exactly what the resort's guests are looking for. The Six Senses Yanoi is a luxurious five-star resort nestled on a small island off the coast of Phuket. Located in the beautiful Bay of Phang Na, this establishment has some of the most stunning and panoramic views of the landscape. With 56 villa rooms built over 24 acres, this resort offers the privacy and luxury the guests are looking for. All centered on a core principle of sustainability. There are many sustainable activities we have. For example, a lot of the timber which is used was taken from old railway track in Burma. So all the sleepers they use again to build our stairs, reuse, recycle in a way. So this is a great initiative. And it was this belief that prompted Six Senses to look at a sustainable way of providing water for its guests. In 2003, they approached Kurt Apel, founder of EcoPure Waters, an establishment that specializes in water treatment. Kurt has worked all over the world in areas where water amenities aren't readily available. So Kurt draws instead on what nature provides in abundance. Well, the water can come from really two places, deep well water or even uh, water catchment systems. Using Kurt's expertise, wells were dug in the Six Senses estate to provide easy access to water. A big catchment area was built as well to collect rain. But all this water is unfit for drinking. What was needed was a method of filtering out the impurities and making the water safe for consumption. The answer lay in reverse osmosis. This semi-permeable membrane is so fine that only water molecules can pass through, leaving fresh clean water on one end and the contaminants on the other. In 2008, Kurt set up a reverse osmosis plant within the Six Senses Resort an automated unit that's capable of converting 2,500 liters of rain and well water into almost as many liters of safe drinking water. All the water is coming from the rainwater catchment and the well water, then it comes in through our high pressure system. As you can see, this is the incoming water here, the dirty water, which proceeds through the high pressure pump that squeezes the water through tiny, tiny membranes that can filter 99.9% of all the bacteria. And this is the drinking water that continues on through our process here. The water then goes to a storage tank before being filtered even further. Three additional cycles of filtration remove any residual impurities before ultraviolet treatment rids the water of all bacteria. But as necessary as this process is, it has a negative side effect. All minerals, which are beneficial for health, are now stripped from the water. To counter this problem, Kurt engineered a unique attachment to the unit, a final filter but this one adds minerals back into the water. After much, a lot of research, we came up with this technology and put calcium, magnesium, and iron back in the water. And the technology is basically called remineralization. The end product is crystal clear water, laden with minerals. And Kurt's system is so well designed that it even has a touch of luxury. We went with higher technology to put in a carbonate in the system. This way, if a guest requires sparkling water, you can serve them the sparkling water. So there's now a still water and a sparkling water better than Perrier. The last step in the process is packaging the water. And even here, sustainable methods are duly practiced. My bottles are made from 50% recycled glass, and they're reusable. In a day, around 500 bottles of water can be filled and given to all the guests of Six Senses. A remarkable outcome for a resort that has no access to water amenities. 
we were able to reduce our waste and we will reduce the carbon emission and basically do something good for, for Mother Planet. More resorts are recognizing the need to adopt similar practices. The main thing about sustainability in business is we don't start to change our world now. There's not going to be a world to live in. The great George Carlin said that we as a civilization, we're, we're going to go away, but the planet's always going to be here. But water isn't the only resource in Phuket that poses problems. Electricity is a necessity as well for all resorts, and some have turned to alternate ways of generating their own power. In Asianopolis, solar-powered structures are commonplace, and some don't even require land on which to operate. The Solar Marine Villa is a solar-powered building which floats on water and is completely self-sustaining. Combining photovoltaic cells with aesthetic design, this villa illustrates how sustainable energy generation can power structures with no access to the electricity grid. Unique architectures like this could ply the equatorial waters of Asianopolis, a sustainable development that culminated from events in the 21st century. In the years that have followed since the 2004 tsunami, tourism has once again picked up in Phuket. And many of the popular resorts have become congested with human traffic once again, especially during high season. But discerning travelers these days are on the lookout for a more exclusive experience, avoiding the crowds and searching for a private, exotic location. Villas like 98 East cater to this ever-increasing demand. Located at the summit of a hill and overlooking the Andaman Sea, this six-bedroom villa, which was built in 2010, is always in high demand. Most of our guests, they are quite private. They want to be far away from Patong, they want to be far away from hustle and bustle. They want to have a private moment. And this is what this place offers. This remoteness gives the guests the private experience they crave. But this exclusivity also brings huge problems. The more remote the area, the harder it is to connect to one of the most basic of amenities, electricity. Being far away, we're not connected to the electricity grid. We hope we could actually have uh, proper electricity. Instead of using conventional diesel generators to power the villa, the focus was placed on sustainable energy. The plan was to use solar power to run the villa, and Claude Feller was sought to provide his expertise. Solar energy is basically the one energy that can be catched up for free, same like hydropower or wind power, and it's the most common type of energy in the world now. The sun has been providing light and heat throughout history, and in this discharge lies an abundance of power. When the sun's energy is harnessed, it can achieve remarkable results. Photovoltaic cells have been around for over half a century and are made of materials called semiconductors, like silicon. When light strikes the cell, its energy is absorbed into the semiconductor, knocking electrons loose, allowing them to travel along the circuit to create a current, which is used to power a range of devices. And these cells have developed to such an extent that they can be used to produce enough electricity to run an entire building. By 2008, the structure of 98 East was complete, and it was now time for Claude to go to work. But the unique architecture of the villa brought about complications during the installation of the cells. And the problems by the installation was we had to install all the panels on a pergola and pergolas couldn't carry enough weight. I had to put some wood panels on the pergola and we could only walk there, yeah? And we had to find the workers from Myanmar, they weighed only 50 kilos, so it was more easy for them to install this. Finally, after two months, the installation was complete. A solar array that can generate an average of 80 kilowatt hours of electricity a day. We have here more than 100 panels. On a nice day as us now, big sun, our output, it's enough us to power the whole villa. In addition to the installations on the roof, 
solar cells are located in the garden as well. This structure pivots throughout the day to maximize the exposure of the cells to the sun. But come nightfall, the cells cease to function, leaving the villa void of electricity. But rather than resorting to diesel generators, Claude implemented a system which held reserves of energy. Welcome at the battery room. Here inside also we have 100 batteries. So each one weighs 80 kilo. So each one of the batteries is a two volt cell. Each one has 1000 amp hour, which makes them two kilowatt hour. All excess electricity that's generated in the day gets transferred to large battery cells, which release energy at night when needed. This entire system is fully automated, with even a modem to allow online access to the system. I'm on my laptop and I can control the performance of the power button on the roof as well of the battery rooms. As early morning, I could check the batteries here and the batteries were full, maybe half, 50%. As now in the late afternoon, the batteries are charged 95%. It means we have enough power here or to make a party tonight, yeah? <laughs> Thanks to solar energy, 98 East has now found a way to generate electricity while reducing its carbon footprint. Traditionally, people use a diesel engine to release carbon, so the world will be polluted. But not us, we release positive energy. Sustainable initiatives like this are trending all over Phuket, as more establishments are joining environmental watchdogs seek in the campaign for sustainable developments. It's essential for Phuket to become the leader on sustainability, you know? because after the tsunami, like the world eyes on Phuket. I must admit that now Phuket is a better place because they start like thinking about sustainability. Hotels, they think more about not only their business, but also the community and environment around them. With sustainability now very much in its mindset, Phuket has changed its very nature. More than just an exotic holiday destination with stunning beaches and glorious scenery, it has now become a model of how a boomtown can continue to successfully flourish without putting a strain on Mother Nature, modeling itself as a future green and successful Asianopolis.